the last flight of the U.S. Space Shuttle is a return visit to the International Space Station for each of the four astronauts on board Atlantis. STS-135 is the third station mission for retired U.S. Navy Captain Chris Ferguson. I was born, raised, and got to spend, you know, all of my grade school and high school years in one place, which was, which was really nice. We had a close-knit community uh, in northeast Philadelphia. Ferguson admits being interested in rockets as a kid, but not necessarily in being an astronaut. It make, made me want to understand things that are larger than life. Um, and uh, I think that's why I wanted to go fly for the Navy and land a plane on an aircraft carrier. After high school, Ferguson went downtown to Drexel University for his Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering while earning his commission through the Navy ROTC program at the University of Pennsylvania. He flew the F-14 Tomcat on deployment aboard the USS Forrestal and attended the Navy's Top Gun Fighter Weapons School, earned a master's in aeronautical engineering at the Naval Postgraduate School, served as an F-14 Weapons Separation Project Officer, and completed a deployment to the Western Pacific and Persian Gulf aboard the Nimitz before being selected for the astronaut program in 1998 and getting his chance to follow in the footsteps of the great explorers of the past. We have a home up there and we're destined to be up there and we're destined to go beyond low Earth orbit, and perhaps set up a colony on the moon and go on to Mars. Ferguson was the pilot on the 2006 shuttle mission that delivered the P-3-P-4 truss to the International Space Station and commander of a 2008 supply flight that delivered one of his current crewmates for her long duration mission. This is the third trip to orbit for Dr. Sandy Magnus, who was born and raised in Belleville, Illinois. Medium-sized town, uh, a lot of family living in the area. It was really quite a nice place to grow up, very solid, well-grounded community, lots of very nice people, and uh, I enjoyed it. You know, we had St. Louis nearby if you wanted to do big city stuff, but we were yet a smaller town, so we didn't have a lot of the big city issues, and it was a good place to grow up. As for her interest in becoming an astronaut, she doesn't really know where it came from. It's something that caught a hold of me when I was in middle school, believe it or not, and I, I've always liked science and technology and math. It's always been fun to learn how the world works and to see new things and learn new things, and there was something about flying in space that just grabbed a hold of me and didn't let go. Magnus got her degree in physics at the University of Missouri Rolla, but discovered engineering while she was there. She finished a master's in electrical engineering at Rolla while she worked for McDonnell Douglas on airplane design and materials, until she left for Georgia Tech to get a PhD from the School of Material Science and Engineering. She was selected for the astronaut program in 1996, ready for another new chapter in her quest to learn new things. We're finding interesting things about the virulency of um, some diseases. We're finding interesting things about how materials operate. We're finding interesting things about just fluid fluid dynamics and all these little pieces of information can be used here on the ground to create things that can help people or technology that can that can do new things. Magnus operated the space station's robot arm during the 2002 shuttle mission that delivered the S-1 truss to the space station and returned in late 2008 to start a four and a half month tour of duty as a flight engineer on Expedition 18. STS-135 is also the third space flight for retired Air Force Colonel Rex Wolheim of Northern California, born in Redwood City and raised in San Carlos. It's a town of about 30,000 people south of San Francisco. It's a great place to grow up, uh, pretty normal middle America, you know, uh, playing sports, little league, you know, uh, football, and uh, uh, I had a, a great support structure, a wonderful mother and father that uh, really uh, really took good care of me and made sure uh, I was, I was uh, going down the right path for school and everything. His interest in the space program grew out of a love of flying, and he got that from his dad. Well, my father was a, uh, a B-17 pilot during the World War II era, so he was a pilot and, and he loved uh, flying, and so he used to take us to air shows, and I think there's something about uh, a flying that sometimes runs in the blood, and so that's something that's passed on from uh, my dad to me. With a bachelor's in mechanical engineering from UC Berkeley, the ROTC student headed straight for Air Force pilot training. But a diagnosis of a heart murmur ended that ambition, and he set his sights on becoming a flight test engineer. After an assignment as a missile warning operations crew commander, 
Walheim was transferred to the Johnson Space Center in Houston for a tour as a mechanical systems flight controller. He also earned a master's in industrial engineering at the University of Houston, and then on to a management job at Air Force Space Command headquarters. When he was accepted for the flight test engineer course at test pilot school, doctors told him he did not have a heart murmur, so his goal of becoming an astronaut re-emerged. Walheim served as a flight test engineer and in management jobs with the F-16 Combined Task Force at Edwards Air Force Base, and then as an Air Force Test Pilot School instructor, before being picked as an astronaut in 1996 and getting the chance to make a lifelong dream come true. It's important to, to keep pushing our boundaries, just like the uh, pioneers in the old days pushed the boundaries and went farther west. And we're learning about our Earth, we're learning about how the human body adapts to space, and, uh, and we're learning all sorts of ways um, physical activities and biological processes behave in space that are different. Walheim did two spacewalks on the 2002 shuttle mission that installed the center section of the station's integrated truss structure, and three more EVAs on the 2008 flight that delivered the Columbus Laboratory module. Marine Colonel Doug Hurley is making his second space flight on STS-135. He was born in the small upstate New York town of Endicott and grew up next door in Appalachian. It was just a, a wonderful place to grow up. It was a very small town. It was fairly rural. I had a lot of close friends, played sports, uh, downhill skied, did all the things that I think you know most folks from that part of the country do and, uh, and really enjoyed it. He remembers being interested in spaceflight but never set himself a goal of becoming an astronaut. I think it was just a natural progression of things, uh, being interested in engineering, being interested in, in aviation and space, and it just kind of led me down a path uh, into college and the military, and then in the Marine Corps, flying fighters, and then uh, ultimately as a test pilot, and then to be lucky enough to get to come here. Hurley went to Tulane on a Navy ROTC scholarship, graduating with a bachelor's in civil engineering. He took his commission in the Marine Corps, completed the basic school and flight school, and made three deployments to the Western Pacific in an F-18 squadron. When his commanding officers encouraged him to do so, Hurley applied to and was accepted at the Navy Test Pilot School. He served in an F-18 test squadron for more than two years and became the first Marine to fly the F-18 Super Hornet before being picked to become an astronaut in 2000. Hurley was the pilot on a 2009 shuttle flight that delivered components of the Japanese section of the International Space Station, and he's eager for the start of the next era of human spaceflight that begins after the final wheel stop of the space shuttle program. Let's, let's explore the moon, let's explore an asteroid, let's explore Mars. Um, to me, that is that is the part of human spaceflight that, that really is exciting. And just to see what's over that next bend and around that next curve is why I originally got into this business.